Hi, we're Richard and Jackie, and we're Early Retirement Wonderlust. We've just got back from a month-long trip around Arizona and Utah, and we've been chatting about which we prefer, van life or hotel life, so here's our thoughts. So we're back in the UK and for the first time in a long time we're back in the van and we're really excited to be here. We haven't gone far, we're only 15 minutes away from home but we needed a night away because the plumbers cut all the water off at home so <laughs> any excuse to get out in the van. Yeah so after a really fab holiday in America um, where we were traveling, we were staying in hotels every night, we've been chatting about which one, which, which we prefer is it van life or is it hotel life? And it's fair to say it's probably not going to be an easy one. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we, we've chosen a few different categories that we're going to have a chat about. And then at the end of each one, we're going to try and make a decision as to who wins out of van life or hotel life. It's fair to say it's probably about five years since we've spent any considerable amount of time in hotels. And we had an absolute blast in America. We didn't go for top-end hotels because we couldn't afford it. We went pretty much for budget-ish hotels. And the comparison with van life was really quite stark. We did really enjoy it. We, I'm, I'm not entirely sure whether I thought I was going to enjoy it or not. But turning up at a hotel, knowing that you've got a nice, clean, prepared room, you've got a lovely, comfortable bed all the time to get into, Someone comes around and makes your bed. You've got lovely clean sheets. There is no feel, oh, no better feeling than clean sheets. So, yeah, I thought hotels were really, really comfortable. Yeah, we had the added advantage of having kettles and fridges in them. So we did have some of the comforts that we have in the van. Uh, where's the van? Five years we've had the van for now. And um, it's fair to say I love my bed in the van. It's really cosy. I've got my own bedding on it. Um there's nothing better than rolling out the bed at the end of a day in the van when we've had a day out in the van. I have always thought the van is really comfortable. Does it compare to the comfort of hotel rooms as such? It's a really difficult one. Um, I was fighting hotel's corner there <laughs> just because someone needed to fight hotel's corner. I really like the fact that the, our bed and our comfort in the van is always with us. Yeah, and we've we've... Got, we've made it to the point where we know what we like in the van and we've got it to the point where we know how to get it really comfy. So, yeah, we like hotels. We did like being in the comfortable hotels, but van life wins it for me. Bathrooms is probably quite an easy one to guess which one's going to win. <laughs> we don't have a bathroom in the van. Um, we've It's a tiny little VW T6. We love our VW T6, but there are no onboard facilities. And you do get used to that. <laughs> And you do get better at working around it. So when we're on the road, um, we get pretty used to using public conveniences. Uh, when we stay at campsites, it's like positive luxury because we've got a shower there. But yeah, the ability to get out of bed and go to an ensuite <laughs> bathroom was just amazing. And nice clean ones. Someone else cleans them for you. So yeah. So on the bathroom front, hotels definitely win. Yep. Definitely hotels for me as well. One of the things I really enjoyed when we were planning our trip to America was actually planning the um, finding different hotels and planning where we were going to stay. It took a lot of research and planning and finding um, places we could afford in some of the play in some of the stops. Yeah. Whereas a camper van, we feel that it, over the five years we've had a camper van, it's provided us the ultimate flexibility. Um, when we first started. We were completely and utterly obsessed with having set itineraries and campsites booked and things like that. Whereas now when we set off, we just sort of know the area that we're going to go to and we wing it. And if the first campsite we come to is full, then we will go and find another campsite. But it does have that ultimate flexibility of having your bedroom or your home on your back. 
And there were times with the hotels where we felt a bit stuck, actually, because particularly if some of you have seen our videos, we got to or we were going to go to the Grand Canyon and we got snowed off. And the panic we had of well, we're going we've we've had to pay up front for the hotel and we're going to lose the money that we paid on it. Um, and we didn't have that flexibility, particularly to swap the bookings. And it was quite a stressful time. Yeah, because you completely at the behest of a hotel company having availability, wanting to swap things round. And for a couple of hours, when we were on the phones <laughs> trying to rearrange the bookings, it was really quite stressful. Whereas we've been snowed in plenty of times in the van. And at the end of the day, if the weather's too bad, you just park up, camp up and see out the storm. Yeah. So in terms, of, yeah, in terms of flexibility, camper vans win. On the surface of it, camper vans are really, really cheap as long as you forget the initial <laughs> outlay of buying a van. And it's fair to say we didn't blow the budget on the van, but we did buy ourselves a really comfortable van five years ago and we bought it as a 10 year project. We're firmly of the view that you do not need to blow the budget on a van because van life and adventuring in a van does not depend on you having an all singing, all dancing motorhome. It's more about the freedom to, to roam and the freedom to travel in your van. So costs wise, yes, vans can be really, really expensive to buy to begin with. Even more so at the moment. <laughs> yeah. um, however, over time, our accommodation is so ridiculously cheap. So tonight we're wild camping out in the Yorkshire Dales, not far from home, and it's costing us nothing. And campsites can vary between £15 and £30 a night, uh, depending where we're staying, in which country we're in. But it's still a reasonable price. Whereas in America, when we were travelling around, um, we tried to limit ourselves to £100 a night-ish budget. There were nights where we found places that were significantly under that budget, and they were still really nice places because we were quite worried about being in sort of Bates motels <laughs> and there were a couple we turned up at and thought oh but they were nice inside um some hotels when we were at Zion National Park were significantly over the hundred pound budget um we stayed at a Holiday Inn Express it was lovely um and we did know up front it was going to be a lot more expensive it was five hundred dollars for the two nights which was eye-wateringly expensive to us it's probably the most expensive <laughs> hotel rooms we've ever booked and they were nice. But we did realise how much, because we were in America for four weeks, we did realise how much it all added up when we got back and did the maths. So my view is that even though you're laying out a lot of money for a camper van to start with, but it doesn't have to be a lot of money, I think it wins on budget. Yeah, we've done four week road trips in Europe where we've probably only spent a few hundred pounds on campsite yeah. fees whereas we've done four weeks in america and we spent a lot of money on hotels it was worth it we knew it was going to be an expensive holiday but yeah camper vans win for definitely win on the costs <laughs> <laughs> traveling on america just using hotels did bring its own trials with catering we found ways around it we would go to supermarkets we would buy big bowls of salads and ready cooked chickens so that we could eat in the hotel rooms we love american food we did visit quite a few fast food establishments but we did find eating out really really expensive in america we found the restaurants um I don't think we ate for under $50 a night, so we couldn't afford to eat out very often. And then we found that we were eating the same foods all of the time, which was quite repetitive. So in a camper van, we try to keep things on a budget. We're in early retirement now, so we're not constantly <laughs> on holiday. So this, when we're traveling in our van, is our life. So we try and keep that as normal as possible. So we do our weekly shop and we try and keep as much of our weekly shop in the van. And... We are pretty frugal. We don't eat out that no. much. And what we're actually finding is that we prefer to, to go out for a drink and put our money into the economy that way and then come back and eat in the van. Not only is it more cost effective, but it allows us to just little 
be a little bit more health conscious when we're on the road. That's what I was going to say, actually. I think we eat more healthily when we're in the van because we can have um, a fresh supply of food all of the time. So, in terms of catering, for me, as much as I absolutely adore <laughs> American cuisine and I loved a month on the road eating out, I think for my own health, I'd have to say the camper van would win. For me, the camper van wins as well, apart from we did find the barbecue place that had happy hour food and drinks. It was $5 a drink, $5 for a plate of food. That was pretty awesome. That takes some beating. <laughs> Even the camper van can't beat that. No. It's quite exciting packing up to go flying um, to America. We hadn't flown for about five years, so actually I was really excited about the journey. Um, and Richard was very excited when we got to Florida. <laughs> to Florida. Richard was very excited when we got to the airport and the only hire car they had was the Mustang. So you quite loved your travel in the Mustang. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and I will not have a bad word said about the Mustang. It uh, it was fab and it was a real experience. Um, I have to say, though, it wasn't the most, it was the funnest car I've driven, <laughs> but it wasn't the most comfortable car I'd driven. It it was just a American muscle car, and I don't suppose it's meant to be comfortable when you're driving around, but when you put your foot down, it went. Um, and it didn't hold the luggage in very well. No. Um, <laughs> and just shoehorning it all in. <laughs> so maybe it's a little bit unfair to compare a VW T6 <laughs> with a Mustang. Um I really like, and I think I've got used to driving a Volkswagen van, and you tend to be that little bit higher up. You can see a little bit more. You obviously can't go as fast. Part of that slowing down process is a is a mental process as well when you're driving. Um, but yeah, the the Mustang was really fun on those big open roads in the desert. But comfort of travel, actually, in the van. We can set off. We know we've got a long journey, but we can break it up. We can stop. We can have a cup of tea if we want to on the way. We can make our own lunch um, if we've got a really long day's travel. And you you like that in the van, don't you? I quite like, yeah. I do like taking the slow road and mm. knowing that we don't actually have to be somewhere as quickly as possible or as efficiently as possible. We can just take our time and stop as Jackie says, whenever we want to stop. Taking the scenery. So, as much as I hate to say it, I do really, really love driving the camper van, the Volkswagen. So, for me, it would be the Volkswagen. And for me, it will also be the camper van. We do love our camper van. But I did enjoy having a fly drive holiday. It did make a nice change. It's fair to say, when we went to America... We knew it was going to be cold, so we knew we had to pack clothing for all sorts of climates. We were going to Phoenix, it was going to be warm in Scottsdale, and we thought it was going to be cold in um, the Grand Canyon. But we, we did take a lot of luggage with us. <laughs> we did. And as well as trying to squeeze it into the Mustang, which we've maybe talked about a little bit earlier on, um, the fact that we were constantly in and out of hotel rooms was pretty tying at the end yeah i found it a chore we were dragging these bags around um when we went to the grand canyon we couldn't drive because of the snowstorm so we took the train and then we were packing and repacking things so that we could actually have all the things we wanted with us in the grand canyon and we, i just found it a faff if i'm honest so everything <laughs> felt just that little bit awkward but when all those little awkward moments just keep adding up yeah, it was pretty tiresome. On the flip side, I think it's because we've probably lived in the camper van for so long, travelling around for five years, that we pretty much know where everything is and everything has its place. Yeah, and we know what we need to pack for what, wherever we're going. Yeah, and we we never forget anything because most of it's in the van anyway. So packing was quite packing is definitely easier in the van. So probably for simplicity, we are a bit camper van yeah, definitely positive. Camp camper van definitely wins on that one. So to summarise, because I haven't got a clue about the scores and when I'm going through editing, I'll probably put scores down at the bottom so we know exactly where it is. Our gut reaction is probably that we 
do prefer the camper van. But that's not to say that we didn't have a fantastic time. Yeah, it was a really, really nice change. Um, flying, going across America in your Mustang. I really enjoyed that holiday, but I loved the camper van. So for me, it's a definite win for the camper van. And for me, likewise. <laughs> I don't think it was ever going to be any different, to be fair, from everyone that watches our videos. you know, They'll know how much we've been away in and a how... camper van and how much we love it. It is. So <laughs> if you're ever in doubt, and we just are obsessive about this, so whenever anyone makes the mistake of mentioning the thought of buying a camper van, we would always <laughs> say, do it, because it just offers that freedom. For us, it's been life-changing. and. We're just having a blast. But we will go on the occasional holiday where we fly, still. Absolutely. <laughs> See you later. Bye.